Right, morning guys, at the War and Peace show today. Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculously hot already. It's only 9 a.m. So let's go and have a look. So you just heard the camera go there, that was the RX-10 Mark IV and this is how fast the camera can actually work. So basically I picked the camera up, turned it on, took a couple of shots as the, uh, the soldiers were marching towards me. So I've actually converted every single image, including the video, to black and white. Just got, I think it works really well like this. Um, and all shot with the Sony RX10 Mark IV. So the War and Peace show has literally everything from obviously big tanks like you can see here to um, people wandering around, digging their own camps, digging their own trenches, um, the stuff for sale, there's like a massive sort of market area um, where you can buy anything from a tank to machine guns, obviously decommissioned stuff, but um, hand grenades, whatever, clothing, everything and anything you can possibly think of to do with the military. So as I wandered around, there's thousands of people here um, doing their own thing, obviously part of the reenactments as such, um, and everyday people like myself taking photos and video. Um, but like I say it was really, really hot. Luckily, it was a little bit of a breeze and a few trees that we could hide under. Uh, also, obviously, plenty of refreshments as well that you could uh, purchase. Uh, not that anybody really wanted to eat anything. It was just cold water and, uh, and uh, slush puppies and stuff like that. So, as you can see, I'm just wandering around, just uh, taking in the sights, really. Um, just so much stuff to see. Um, as you can see, people are they're not really doing a lot because it was so hot, they were obviously just relaxing, um, but making the most of it itself. Um, so, yeah, I just carried on wandering around and uh, 
sort of uh, snapping away as I saw things. There we go, it's 12 o'clock. It's bars open. <laughs> so, obviously, with the camera running around with, you can do some nice slow motion uh, video clips as well. So, 500 frames per second of the noonday gun there going off. Uh, the Nazi flag there just blowing in the wind very slowly. Um, also, while they're there, they're all doing um, sort of traditional cooking methods and everything like that as well. They've got their fires lit and, and, and all that sort of stuff as well, which is quite interesting to see. So, um, you have these little stoves, you know, that are burning away, um, you know, causing, I mean, the day wasn't the day to have a fire lit, that's for sure. It was 35 to 37 degrees Celsius, so it was pretty, pretty hot. Um, this was um, the chimney of the of a um, steam traction engine. So um, this was just puffing out the top of its uh, chimney there, um, which looked quite cool. And uh, yeah, so yeah, really quite handy to have the extra sort of usability of uh, anywhere between up, up to a thousand frames per second uh, slow motion. So as you can see here, the RX10 Mark IV is seriously sharp. You've got some really, really good high quality images there with no editing, just straight out of the camera, just a quick conversion into black and white. They're all being very conservative. We want to see air, we want to see jumps from the, from the big mound in the middle. Especially the one with the trailer. It was really dusty. I mean, there was so much dust. As soon as the um, any of the big vehicles, anything from a Land Rover and bigger, uh, the amount of dust that was created, it was made some really cool stuff like this. A bit of slow motion uh, video. Um, that six-wheel drive uh, vehicle there was probably doing 30 miles an hour. Obviously, I've slowed it right down, so you can see every single uh, splash of dust and stuff that was coming up. As you can see in the distance behind you, the other stuff was just still floating around. Uh, the RX-10 Mark IV was absolutely covered in dust and uh, was, but still working absolutely fine. So didn't worry too much. So this is inside uh, a tank there, just something quickly as I sort of left. Um, this is, that was just a quick walk around so you could see the, the location and the grounds and everything and what was there. Um, the photos are at the end of the uh, the video so 
um, basically just wait till the end and obviously you can uh, be able to see all of the photos um, but basically as I left um, it was way past 30 degrees Celsius so I decided to get an ice cream on the way out Oh yeah, uh, I'll do a waffle with a flake, waffle. please. Yeah, just don't fill it up too much. Because it will be on the floor in about five seconds, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, cheers. Thank, Thank you very much, cheers. Thank you. Down to find the car. I remember I had a flake just melt before we've even chewed into it. Uh, I think. <sighs> okay, I've got the car it's easily spotted, but. There she blows. Trying to find the car, lost it. <laughs> That's probably like an oven. <laughs> I'm lucky I've got something that's quite obvious, but lots of people are going, where's my car? Where's my car? What have we got? <laughs> <laughs> The aircon's going mad. Right guys, back to the car. A little bit warm, it's showing 41 outside. Which is, uh, yeah, it feels it as well. It's bloody really hot. I'm sweating everywhere. Literally a, a slight glaze to my skin everywhere. Um, not a bad day. Um, not actually that many people here because I think it's so hot that actually no one's bothering. Um, but uh, anyway, I've got some shots, got some video. So let's go home. Relax, chill out, and uh, have a look at some photos. Right, as you can see, the, uh, the beginning of the photos. Um, all of them shot on the Sony RX10 Mark IV, obviously with the 24 to 600 mil range uh, from f2.4 to f4. Uh, shot all of them at ISO 100. The light was amazing, um, actually not too hazy. Um, the only issue was the dust. There was tons of dust flying up in the air. But as you can see, every single shot is tack sharp. Um, and I converted all I've done to all of the shots is just a black and white conversion, so um, which works really nicely. The style of shooting I went for before I'd even converted them was to actually overexpose very slightly, so have it nice and bright, and uh, basically it kind of gives you that older feel. I think um, this guy here was just random shot, but he must have been so hot in a suit that's ridiculous. Um, but anyway, so I mean, he had, had I say hats off to these guys as well. Um, anybody who was dressed up in sort of the woolen clothing and things like that, that must have been so hot, um, absolutely ridiculous. But um, yeah, basically, um, just giving it a brighter feel. Um, back when they were using cameras back then, they wouldn't have had um, all as much control and luxury as we have today with the cameras we're using. So I thought, you know, there's going to be plenty of dust, which is quite light. Um, so let's work on that. Quite high contrasting um, black and whites and uh, go from there, really. So really pleased on how they've turned out. I've had a couple of um, friends comment saying they have really felt like they were going back in time. But obviously the photos are clearer than they expected uh, than if they were um, obviously taken back 19... Uh, 39 40s sort of that uh, era i know that some of the shots here are sort of based in the 90s and 80s and 70s as well um, and obviously back to the 40s and 
uh, 3940s sort of that sort of era um but yeah some of the vehicles actually worked really well and and just the way the dust and everything just was blowing up and everything was amazing um worked really nicely so i think there's only one shot um out of all of my left as color which was just the union jack flag um but just because it was so well lit and actually um just looked really really cool um and just the way it was blowing in the wind luckily there was a little bit of a breeze um to help us stay a little bit cooler um but it's got a nice rip in them obviously a bullet hole possibly um right in the middle of there but just the way it's backlit slightly um, just worked really nicely and the dust up in the background from because that was actually on top of a tank while it was driving around so the dust being blown up behind um but the speed some of these were traveling was was quite amazing um obviously enjoy enjoy owning them and things like that but they must cost quite a bit to run obviously they don't do many miles a year um and you're also utilizing the big zoom lens um to get in to places where you know and watching the action so the tank track there chucking up all the uh grass and bits of uh mud or whatever or dry mud um and uh obviously closer headshots and things like that which work quite nicely obviously some things weren't quite in right the period like sunglasses uh, a bit too modern but other than that most people were really well dressed and uh you know i was able to get shots like this um when they were right over the other side of the battleground as such um, but uh yeah no it just worked really nicely um but uh yeah really really hot um, i just wouldn't want to be driving around in a hot tank that day i mean that must have been literally like an oven uh, because they've got no insulation they're just literally sheet metal aren't they with not much space inside either so you know a hot engine and uh you know no comforts or air conditioning apart from a couple of the uh the Land Rovers had uh, aircon. Some of the desert Land Rovers had aircon, apparently, um, which obviously makes life a little bit easier. And then there's plenty of little gun emplacements, things like that. You can walk around and, and take pictures. But people were so hot in there that they weren't really um, taking much time sitting in there. They were sort of hiding like this underneath the shade of tanks and uh, things like that. So, but it allowed me to get some really cool shots. Uh, one guy is asleep the other guy's just leaning thinking just thinking to himself probably by the hell am i doing this but this shot here i really love um it just looked straight into my camera and i'm 30 feet away 40 feet away and he just happened to look left um just shows you how good that camera is um just really usable for the day really enjoyed using it um it did have one moment but i'm not sure if that was heat related or it just had a bit of a weird strange moment where i just popped the battery out and plugged it back in again and it was fine for the day um it just seemed to not want to respond uh, for some reason but after that it was literally absolutely fine um there's mock-ups of everything mock-up graves here from uh, dead soldiers um you've got everything from the german side um obviously english everything like that and uh, anything in between really so it worked really well um but it seemed quieter this year i'm not sure if it's just getting smaller or if uh, less people came due to the heat um don't really know but the shots I was allowed, you know, I was able to get, um, really pleased with, and I think they really do work in black and white. In color, they're okay, but I think uh, in color, if I will, if I was going to um, edit a few, I'd probably desaturate them a little bit just so they weren't quite so vivid, um, due to obviously modern cameras and the, the color capture. This shot here wasn't actually all that good. It, it's actually not that sharp on the guy, um, and uh, I didn't use eye autofocus, so that was a probably the worst shot of the day. Um, but you got everything from like tank stoppers, you got old mock-ups of things like this, don't shoot, um, you know, stuff like that, you know, signs and just jerry cans and, and things like this. This guy sat on a big um, anti-aircraft gun uh, sort of trailer, um, just enjoying the sun, just having a think really. Um, you know, there's lots going on, but also it was so hot that a lot of people were just chilling, which actually was quite nice because it kind of made you think, you know, what, what was it like, what do they do a lot of when they're sat in the war zone? And the temperatures are sort of like ridiculous. There probably doesn't happen. Not much happens probably for uh, some of it. You know, they're probably not really uh, doing a lot. You know, if it is hot, they'll just be sitting around waiting and hoping that no one's gonna sort of kick off and start shooting at them. So, uh, Spitfire cruising past. That took off from Headcorn, I think. They've got two. One's a two-seater and one's a, a single-seater. That was a two-seater one that was flying about. I have got the single-seater later on in one of the shots. Uh, this is 360 history. I actually did some stuff with them last year if um i'll put a link to last year's video as well 
Uh, they do a, a Black Hawk Down reconstruction. It's actually really good. Full on uh, machine gun fire and everything. Uh, which you'll see a little bit later on. There's more um, more photos coming. Um, but yeah, no, it worked really, really nicely. The way they, uh, um, you know, uh, actually dressed up to. The, I mean, they must have been so hot. Uh, dressed up full, full kit, ready to go. Um, you know, fully loaded up and everything. So everything they were carrying around is obviously relatively heavy. Um, bulletproof vest and everything they got on as well. This guy here just just chilling. I think I don't think he was talking to anybody. Um, but it's quite nice to see these, you know, the cap and everything, the, even glasses and everything, and the big moustache look quite cool. Just had some lovely textures as well to the photos. This guy here is brilliant. Um, umbrella obviously keeping himself cool, but the goggles and everything is just and the moustache was really really funny. Um, but it's kind of adds a different look to it. Uh, this guy here, uh, the Germans, um, they've been sitting up on the tank. Um, he was just walking towards me and obviously just snapped a shot. The other guy behind him was with him. Um, but it's just nice when you get, you know, they're not worried about being in photos and the eye contact was great. This guy here, um, quite cool the way he's holding the gun and everything like that. Just a bit blase really about everything. Um, you know, and, the, and the sort of the dress and all the stuff in the background worked really well. This guy here um, just come out of his uh, tent. And uh, so he's got a can or something and a spoon. He's obviously eating some lunch. Um, obviously for a swastik on his t-shirt and everything like that with the, you know, the other things there. Uh, these are the guys sat on top of the tank there. It must have been quite warm up there. Um, but again, some really cool shots. Uh, it just work. Um, obviously, war photos like this in the real world, you know, there's lots of war photos taken um, that obviously probably look a bit like this. Um you know, obviously, but had a lot more impact because obviously there are real, real bullets and real shells and things being fired at each other. Um, but this gives us an insight, and it's kind of uh, it's quite an interesting um, look in you know behind this kind of scenes of how war used to be. Um, obviously, it's still to, going on today um, in different places. I like this one because you've obviously got the shadowing uh, from the sun from their netting, the camo net, um, which worked quite well. Um, everything's quite contrasty. So you've got quite bright overexposure, slightly with the contrast shadows, which work quite nicely. They're here again, one of the uh, US uh, guys there with his gun and everything. But as you can see, the uh, the shadowing on his helmet and everything, and also across his hand and the over the rifle itself uh, from uh, the thing there. Uh, three uh, 60 history, um, their helicopter there. I just really like the shadow on the ground. Um, you know, it looks like he could have just landed or whatever. And the way the sky was, it was just sort of uh, uh, bright blue with uh, the old cloud. Here's a there's basically a um, the front section of a, a jet, a fighter jet, and uh, basically you could sit in it if you wanted to. Um, this is one of the helmets and everything. Uh, one of the old jeeps there, just sat in parts. It was really cool with the tent and everything. Just worked really nicely. And uh, yeah, just so just works really, just looks cool and. Uh, just the way the textures are, like this one, this guy's hat and his, his uh, jacket and everything, his shirt. Um, they must have been so hot though, that it looks really warm. I, mean, I was just wearing a t-shirt and combat trousers and I was hot, but <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look too impressed, does he? Um, but even you can see the uh, the perishing in that tyre behind you, behind him, sorry. Um, you can see all the cracking and the perishing in the, the spare tyre that was there. Uh, these two guys here... Um, just driving down through the main straight kind of thing, uh, but they, you know, it's just some of these shots just really work. The way they've, you know, mocked up their makeup and everything to make them look like they've been out in the desert and, and things like that. A couple of old cars here and a tank behind it to the right, and obviously another one in the distance there. Um, looking at the kind of overexposure thing slightly, just to kind of give it that feel of, you know, inaccuracy of uh, photography back then. There's a Spitfire coming into shot where the guy's looking in the completely wrong direction. Um, so in the real life, he probably would have got shot, um, but works quite well as a as a, as a photo. Uh, another lad here stood in the uh, the trenches that they dig out. So they dug all a lot of the trenches were dug by hand, um, just because you get a better way. Some people obviously use diggers; they have diggers to use, but a lot of them actually did, especially friends of mine. Um, they were there and they were they actually dug them by hand, but they were too hot; they didn't bother going. And they're so hot it was uh, not. Um, not worth going in but then 
on Friday, uh, so I went on Thursday, Friday absolutely chucked it down, so I'd imagine it was a little bit muddy um, by by the morning or late morning on Friday, and uh, you know, just a completely different contrasting uh, feel to the situation. Uh, and this guy here in one of the uh, military uh, Land Rovers, the V8 one that sounded really cool, um, just cruising around. And uh, what else? and there was obviously big humps and stuff like this. So this Land Rover here was um, came round the other side and actually came up and over. Uh, it's quite a large, quite a large hump actually, um, which they came up with ease. It was no real drama. Um, so plenty of dust being kicked up, but it's almost a shame that it was muddy as well. So you know it wasn't muddy rather. Um, would have been quite a bit more uh, interesting to see how it actually came up over. Um, but I, I learned to drive one of these. I had this was my sort of first car, something like this, a very similar 110 Defender. Um, I used to drive around in. It was my dad's, um, and uh, so I learned to sort of uh, sort of uh, first real car of driving was was one of those. Um, 101, I think they are. I think that's a 101. Could be wrong. It, it was a different variation, wasn't there? But um, this is up on the hump, so they're basically driving, stopping for a second or two, and then driving on. So it actually gave it quite a cool side-on profile shot. This old guy here is just actually watching the Land Rovers drive around, but he was all dressed up as well. Um, that beard and everything looks really quite cool, and just the way people were just sort of reacting, really. You know, it's just um, this guy here. I'm not sure what he was doing, um, but they're just doing stuff. So it kind of makes you feel like you're actually there. You know, you're part of you know what's going on I know they had like fires lit and, and things like that here's the girls with the uh, ice lollies again um, these are just sort of a lemon flavoured ice lolly I believe so it's kind of a bit more realistic than stuff they might have back then uh, you know I think um, sort of real lemonade and, and things like that was made back then and obviously possibly made ice lollies like that to suit so but as you can see they're lovely and sharp you can only see the reflections in the uh, in their glasses there um, so you know, brilliant, um, brilliant camera for this sort of situation, especially where how much dust there was flying around. That I didn't have to worry about changing lenses and things like that. Where obviously sensors get dirty, especially I wouldn't have risked risk even taking the lens off. Um, so back to this is the uh, the 360 history uh, guys. Uh, a couple of shots of them, um, but uh, yeah, it was you know it was a, it was a great day. Even though I think actually for me. The year before was actually a better day, um, just because I think it wasn't quite so hot. It was still a hot day, I remember that, but there was, seemed to be more more things going on. But I think this year, because it was so hot, literally people were just trying to stay cool and not really, uh, you know, overheat and and you know cause themselves in injuries or anything like that or health issues. There was I did see someone had uh, possibly had a, a collapse or something due to the heat. I'm not really sure what was going on because it was quite a way away and there was ambulances and stuff there so um, I'd imagine that was to do with the heat um, so hopefully they were, they were okay but uh, there's obviously medics and everything on site um, so yeah this is the some of the reenactment shots um, there's a lot of people there so I couldn't really get I didn't have a chat I should have talked to the guys beforehand um, which I saw at the end um, I probably could have got a better angle if I needed to but actually still got some kind of cool shots anyway um, and uh, the gunfire and everything sounds very realistic. Obviously, they're blanks, um, but uh, it's very sort of it's a good insight and a good feeling. You can see one of the bullets there being ejected from the gun to the right hand side, and there's a few more shots in a minute. You'll see where um, plenty of uh, rounds are being flying around out of the side of the uh, the chamber where they're getting ejected. So you know it works. You know it's really quite a good. Um, inside, I think it made a few people jump um, because it was quite loud. But yeah, no. So it was, um, yeah. I mean, it was, it was good insight, and I think this the weather was a real good insight. It was a Black Hawk down where they were. Um, it was a very hot place, very hot place, and uh, quite dusty and everything like that. So.
So that was a little bit of insight to the uh, the gunfire that was happening. It was probably about 12, 12 people shooting, um, roughly. Uh, and obviously you can see the rounds there being fired out of the gun uh, as they were being fired. Um, obviously blanks, and obviously no one was injured or, or really shot. But um, it just really, really good insight of actually how it must be and must feel. Um, and these guys, they change around the scenery a little bit every year so every time you see it it's slightly different uh, this year it was a bit more uh, open um it's still got the helicopter there and everything like that which is really cool um but i say they're firing these guns just constantly for about five six minutes something like that the um the actual show goes on they have a little um uh, discussion at the beginning and explain the reason why um it happened and how it happened blah 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 um and as always, a big tank or something drives past, so you can't really hear half of it for a bit, and then it drives away. Um, that was just bad luck. But as you can see, it's kind of a real... The facial expressions and everything, they're quite into it. Um, and, uh, you know, the shocks of the guns going off, the vibrations and everything, the loudness, um, does affect everyone in there shouting. Uh, it's obviously quite well scripted at the same time, but they are literally um, shouting instructions to each other, and obviously while the guns are going off, um, so it works really, really well, and it's a really, really good thing to see. Um, and uh, I mean, there's probably a hundred odd people watching when I was stood there. And they did a couple of shows a day, um, but really, really cool, really, really cool day out, um, just in general. Um, and having these guys there as well really makes it worth going to the show. Um, they obviously, love doing what they love doing, um, and uh, you know, so they they do move around to different shows as well. I know that. Um, but even though shots like this where you know the guy's sort of hiding behind something he was, he was actually putting his pistol away because um, he had that out because he ran out of ammo and his um, his gun um, but everything from the little details like the zip ties there for doing um, handcuffs to cuffing people and stuff like that they've got everything there on the on their suit um, and, and dress and everything that they would have had uh, um, in the real world kind of thing for dealing with uh, the war situation the two pilots sat in the helicopter um, waiting for the extraction as such of the the injured party that they were trying to rescue um, that were under fire kind of thing um, it was random stuff like you know on their set um, like this Pepsi sign which is all nicely roughed up and uh, things like that which is kind of cool really adds to the uh, the sort of feel of everything and it's obviously a recognizable name and this is the end of the uh, the reenactment there where they're obviously just chilling out and just calming down um, but it kind of adds that kind of feel that, you know, I've just finished a gunfight. Oh, I'm still alive, kind of, you know, that kind of feel. And a little bit of happiness there, um, you know. And I kind of think that is kind of a real feel to what what you must feel, you know, if you've been shot at and you've survived, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, I can say, um, just a really good day out. And, um, I mean, the tickets were 20 quid, I mean, you know, for one day. So, you know, it's worth every every penny. Uh, I was there for six hours. So when you look at it like that, there's one of the Dad's Army kind of guys. Works really nicely, this shot. And uh, I just took it so quickly that, um, you know, it's great having the RX-10 Mark IV as the super fast focusing. And that was shot at 600 mil as well. So as they walked towards me, and this guy was on the uh, on one of the setups there, um, obviously just doing demonstrations and stuff like that so anyway guys i hope that was a, a nice little insight to the day out um i know it's dragged on a little bit but um you know hope, hope you've watched it all um don't forget to click the subscribe button and uh, any questions or anything about the rx10 mark 4 please, please feel free to ask um and uh, anything about the photos really so anyway guys i shall see you soon and uh, there'll be another video uh, coming along as well